and Barrel TV, the voice for humanity. Hello, welcome to New York Parrot Literary Corner. I am Dustin Pickering, your host and anchor today. And today we have Razauddin Stalin, who is a well-known poet in Bangladesh and beyond. And he was born on the 22nd of November, 1962 in Jessore, Bangladesh. He has done his bachelor's degree in economics and MA in political science from Dhaka University. He is the former deputy director at Nazrul Institute where he was employed for 35 years. His poems were translated into most languages in the world. And he's also a well-known TV anchor and media personality in Bangladesh. He is the founder and chairman of the Performing Arts Center and is also the senior editor of Magic Lanthan, a literary organization. He is total number of books, 100 now, and he has a Wikipedia page as well. Some of his awards include the Darjeeling Nato Chakro Award in India, the Bangla Academy, Michael Madhushian Duda Award, the Shabho Sashi Award, West Bengal, Tarango of California Award, USA, Writers Club Award in California, Madame Culture Award, California, City Ananda Alo Award, West Bengal, India, Center Stage Barashat Award, Journalist Association Award, UK, and Silk Road Poet Laureate Award in Xi'an, China. Thanks for joining us today. How are you? I'm cold, yeah. Excellent. I um, had a we we'll think we'll have a great interview today, and uh, we're, we're going to uh, discuss uh, literature and and um, you know poetry especially. So, what does literature mean to you, and how does that work its way into your own literary output? Uh, I think that our literature is uh, a very affectionate with people people based literature and uh, art for people's sake we believe like that and uh, mm -hmm. our poetry pro people poetry our great poet rabindranath tagore mm -hmm. who got nobel in uh, 1913 he is the first nobel laureate poet in our language and after uh, so many poets i can uh, share their names our rebel poet, Kaji Najrul Islam, Jibon Anandu Dash, and a recent modern poet, Shamsur Rahman, Al Mahmud, Rafi Kajad, Abul Hassan, Abdul Mannan Sayyad, Nirmal Indugun, etc. And I think that our cultural heritage from 2000 years, mm -hmm. we have a great cultural heritage. We have a, uh, we have got a great, uh, our heritage from our folk culture. I can tell their names. Fakir Lalon Shah, he's, he's a great singer and uh, also poet. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, uh, I can tell uh, Michael Madhusudan Dutt, so he's the first modern poet in our culture, in our language. And I also inspired from them because uh, our cultural heritage, our poetry comes from people's essence, people's, uh, uh, people's thoughts. So I also like to write our people's heart or people's strengths. Uh, and I also, uh, I can uh, share some lines from Chase Elliott. Mm -hmm. He told that uh, all heritage comes from a great labor. So I want to, uh, I want to, uh, some, I want to some put some labor uh, to our literature, to our poetry. And I think that our modern poetry is a standard, world literature standard. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I can share some names from 
uh, world literature, Pablo Neruda, mm -hmm. and Baudelaire, John Arthur Rambo, uh, and recent uh, Thomas Tanstromer, who is Swede, the poet of Sweden. Mm -hmm. And I can I can tell some uh, uh, from American poets, uh, Gary Slider. Uh, John Ashbery, Seema Sini from England, Irish poet, we read them thoroughly from translation and into English also. So I think our poetry, now our poetry standard is now international standard. And our Bangla poetry, uh, if we translate to other languages, if you read our poems, you will see that our poetry is a really a good, beautiful, and pro-people poetry. We also fought against undemocratic situation. We also fought against uh, 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 all darkness. Uh, and uh, we also fought dictator. So uh, our, our poems uh, also in, uh, in pro-people, so our liberation war, our language movement, we also, our, our poet, our all poets also with all, uh, uh, against all aggression. So uh, I can tell you that our poetry is, uh, a poetry, poetical heritage is international standard. And we also believe human, humani, humanist, uh, we also believe all, all humanity. We also believe all, uh, honesty. We also believe uh, truth and beauty. I also quote some, I also share some lines from uh, Robert Frost, which mm -hmm. is to understand, but easy to love. So we love poetry. Thanks. Excellent. So, um... What do you do when you're not writing? What do you do? What other activities that you do you pursue? Do you have any other artistic hobbies? Uh, almost time I write poetry. I write some articles. Uh, mm -hmm. After that, I uh, I am anchor of television. Uh, I I anchoring uh, with two or three televisions our uh, ch channels. Uh, ATN Bangla, GTV, Channel I. Uh, I also work with them as, uh, as a uh, anchor. Okay. And I, I, I also, uh, uh, if I get, get time, I also want to read poem. I also read novel, I also read article. And my favorite uh, writer is Jose Saramago. Mm -hmm. uh, Jorge Luis Borges, mm. Gabriel Garcia Marquez, mm -hmm. and uh, Chinua Achebe. Mm. Uh, they are uh, my favorite writer. Uh, and some Japanese writer, Haruki Murakami, mm -hmm. also my favorite writer. I, if I get time, I'll, I uh, read them. So you spend a lot of time reading uh, other writers as well as doing your anchoring in uh, your TV anchoring. So that, that's a lot of keeping busy there. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, but uh, I also want to keep myself with poems and poetry. Also. Exactly, yeah, and writing as well. So. What are you currently doing to encourage literary pursuits amongst your in your community? Uh, you know, what what kind of uh, are you building any foundations or you know promoting literature in any other way besides writing? Uh, please tell me again. Um, I uh, what I was asking is, uh, are, what what else are you doing currently to encourage literary activities amongst your community? Uh, amongst people, are you? Do you have any groups that you attend that um, 
you know, pre, pre-COVID, I mean, like, you know, obviously COVID has affected India, especially right now. But before that, was there any other activities you participated in for literature? I understand that uh, in this moment, uh, COVID-19 is very dangerous in our country. And also yes. India and Bangladesh, uh, in Asian subcontinent, we also try to help some uh, victim, victim people. And uh, we go to them and we uh, give them some support, economical support also. And uh, we also tell them you should use masks, sanitizer, everything. This is the main protect protection. So, uh, uh, and our community, uh, poet community also do like that. And all artists, uh, singer uh, uh, and uh, actress, actor, actress, and poet, uh, uh, novelist, everybody, uh, everybody, we are togetherly helping them. And I, I, I wrote some poem, uh, 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 Corona, on Corona, uh, and it translated some languages, English and uh, uh, Arabic and Latin languages. I wrote some poem uh, on Corona. Interesting. So do you have a poem of your own to share with us uh, for the program? Uh, yes, uh, I can I can uh, read my poem uh, named The Lament of Titonas. Uh, uh, this is my book uh, published from Amazon. Oh, beautiful. My selected poems of the Amazon published this book. Uh, I am read. I am going to read that. Okay. The lament. Tonight, my grandmother took no food. Occasionally, after a quarrel with my mother, she used to pour her food down on the floor. Though she might scoop up one or two morsels, it is said that a person wet down with age tends to give into childish propensities and become irresistible and stubborn in nature, not trusting anybody or anything. For myself, exiled grandmother, for myself, exiled grandmother, I feel a compassion. This is but natural as I have not yet aged as two months. My unfit grandmother wishes fitfully till the late hours of the night, when the noise of her weeping rouses me from sleep, I too start weeping a titanus within. Grandmother's laments, I am ever, have been heard by everybody in the house and also by some among the neighbors, but none could yet hear my laments, none even I myself. Thank you. Thank you. What what are you what poem is, what is that about? What are you referring to in that poem? The, uh, my grandmother, uh, his uh, is it grandmother? Uh, when my mother uh, tells her told something, uh, and my mother became angry, so my grandmother never took food. This is the main fact because mm -hmm. he was oldest woman and. Uh, she was the oldest women, uh, all oldest men, uh, like uh, their, their behavior like childish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the this is the main story. Interesting. So this is, uh, this, hmm? is this is this story comes from my life, and right. I saw my grand, grandmother like that, he weeping like that way. Mm -hmm. That's why I wrote this poem. Okay, very interesting. I, I, I liked it a lot. Uh, I, was there a mention of lemons somewhere in there? Did you refer to lemons in the poem? Yeah, yeah. I, I thought I heard yeah. mention lemons. Uh, that, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, this is true. So as a writer, I, I'm, I looked at some of your, uh, you know, your uh, introduction to your book online. 
And uh, I wondered, how does futility engage you as a writer? There was a mention of futility and how it engaged writers in your introduction to your book uh, during the 20th century. Do you, you know, do you feel that it, that's still valid as an aesthetic? Can you tell me again? Do you think his futility of life, you know, like the very 20th century literature was full of these, uh, these tropes about, um, you know, futility, uh, the Sisyphus myth of Sisyphus and, you know, things of that nature. Does, do you think that's still valid today or do you feel like, uh, does that still engage you as a writer of those kind of themes? Uh, I little bit understand, but uh, my before my poem, uh, uh, I in in my childhood I uh, wrote uh, a poem uh, uh, for uh, it, it was uh, verse, but now day by day when I becoming when I become understand, I understand that our uh, people, our society, our country. Uh, when I saw the undemocratic situation, then I wrote against that situation. And I think that uh, uh, my childhood and my youth, and just now, uh, when uh, had, uh, this, in this present time, I uh, I wrote uh, my I, I wrote my poem. Uh, I write my poem uh, for people. Uh, this is my subject, actually, humanity. Right. My my. This is my subject. My subject is humanity, mm -hmm. uh, and all all over the world, I saw that uh, all famous poets, they are they are like that. Their subject is people. Their sub subject is uh, humanity, and mm -hmm. uh, humanity comes from. Uh, I think that uh, uh, many years ago. Uh, the uh, Greek civil from Greek civilization, and uh, we we uh, we get we got uh, our philosophical uh, our philosophical aspect, and I I also use in my poem uh, some uh, epical tone, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and I I also use in my poem that. Uh, uh, can, can I say yeah, we in Bangla call Puran myth mythological aspect is very strong in my poem uh, and uh, I also use uh, Greek mythology, Persian mythology, uh, Indian mythology, mm -hmm. Arab mythology. I mean, uh, I think that mythology is the uh, is the main stream of poem, and you see that all great poets, they also use mythology with their present context. I, I also use like, uh, I used to like my, in my poem, uh, mythology. Uh, mm -hmm. if, you, if you read my poem, you see that Greek mythology is strongly comes in my poem. Thanks. Hmm. Yeah, I think uh, mythology, is definitely, um, as far as literature, the great literature out there is definitely based a lot on on the Greek myths and the and the mythologies of the various countries of the world. And there's a lot of similarities between, you know, each country. They have different stories, but they're all seem to be rooted in in humanity and and the pursuit of truth and what it means to be human. Uh, do you engage with that in your literature? Yes, yes. You um, you, you uh, rightly told that uh, I, uh, mythology is uh, you also support uh, human trends and uh, mm -hmm. mythology also uh, uh, teaches that how to uh, how to go through uh, how to go uh, future and uh, how to go forward. You, you see, uh, uh, mm -hmm. next year we got Nobel laureate uh, poet Louis Klug. He also uh, used mythology mm -hmm. in uh, in his poem, and he also 
He also used Greek mythology, right? Basically, and we read his we read her poem. He he is also great poet, I think so. And uh, his I I uh, read some poem of um, uh, Louis Clough. He he used Greek mythology. Uh, mm -hmm. And 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 he is also uh, his poem is uh, in uh, with humanity. He he used to uh, he used to human character. He used to he used to all uh, all society all performance of people uh, of societies. So uh, he though he used to mythology, but present time also he uh, present time also in his poem. I I I I understand like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, were you? Do you remember the uh, the Bangladesh Liberation War and the refugee crisis uh, that happened in nineteen seventy one? Do you remember that? Does that have any impact on your actual writing, uh, contemporary like now? Do you? Does anything affect related to that? Do you write about that at all? Yeah. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. I uh, then I was uh, ten years old in 1971, and I saw our liberation war. The Pakistani mm. army killed so many peoples and they raped our uh, our uh, uh, our two three lakhs women, and inhumanly they tortured us and mm. brutally they killed our and we fought against Pakistan. And we get liberty. Now mm -hmm. we are uh, uh, sub uh, sub uh, our our liberty, and uh, we are we are a uh, democratic country. And mm -hmm. our now now we are growing day by day. Uh, our country is developing country. I think so. And uh, I think that uh, within. Within a few years, we, our economic development will be good. I think so. It's excellent. I hope so as well. You know, it's it's tough after a separation like that. You know, for a country to develop independence. Uh, do you write about those subjects at all? Uh, please tell me, please again. Do you write? Did, did any of your poetry did, in your poetry? Do you ever write about the the war of liberation there? Yes, I uh, I I write uh, so many poems uh, uh, in, uh, for, for, in our uh, liberation uh, war, uh, and uh, I when I was uh, ten years old, uh, I saw the war of uh, war and battle. So I I, I have um, as I I can remember all things and mm -hmm. sometimes also I I put uh, uh, our liberation wall uh, how to we fight against Pakistan. Sometimes I write my my poem mm -hmm. and uh, and I dedicated our uh, our freedom fighters. Uh, uh, two or three poems. Okay. And also regularly, I write poem. They, they came in my mind, and and we uh, we also struggle for our language, and we fight against Pakistan for our language. Language language movement uh, started 1952, mm -hmm. and we got our uh, our right, our language right. And now our language is international mother language, you know. Right. Yes, it's a very beautiful language. I believe UNESCO said uh, Bengali is uh, one of the sweetest languages in the uh, in the world now. Thank you. Excellent. Um, so moving on, where, where do you see yourself in, uh, in about five years from now as a, as a writer and a poet? I, 
I, uh, I, I, I think that if I write properly, if I can uh, go properly uh, with poem, then uh, I, uh, and I, I think that if I uh, would be with man, in human, and my human uh, humanity, in, I, I believe in my soul. I, I want to write for people. I want to write for my country. So, and I want to write for the rights, their benefits. I am also against uh, inhuman, inhumanity. And I also, undemocratic, I, am, I also write, want to write against undemocratic situation. Uh, then uh, if I write properly, I think people will love me and I will go uh, internationally. That's excellent. I wish you luck in that. To, to help me, I think that uh, my poem will uh, uh, will all will go all over the world. I think so. I think it definitely is worth uh, sharing with the world. Uh, just just keep doing what you're doing. Maybe you'd like to share another poem with us for uh, for now. Would you like to read another poem? Uh, yes, I can. I can uh, uh, read some poem from uh, my the door. The next poem, the door. Mm -hmm. uh, give me some time. Okay, you're watching the New York Parrot Literary yeah. Corner. Yeah, fast food in Stalin. Your program is very beautiful and. Uh, Fascinating to me. Uh, I think that uh, this is the uh, great platform for all poets. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. Uh, and, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you don't mind, you can give me your poem. I can translate in Bangla. Okay. Uh, I, and I published in our country. If you give me your poem. I don't have anything on me right now, but I'll send you something later on. I'm looking, I'm looking at the door. Uh, please give me some time. <laughs> uh, take your time. If you're out there listening in, viewers, please uh, feel free to donate at apal.me slash nyparent. If you're enjoying the program, subscribe. Please subscribe to our channel. Everyone out there viewing right now, uh, it's a great opportunity for writers and poets and, and all creative minds to join in worldwide. We're trying to build a community and support our fellow writers. And uh, it just will be, it's a wonderful program to listen in and share, share our videos. If you're out there listening right now uh, and viewing this program, Share our videos. Give us a like on our program, on our, each of our videos, uh, any of them that you particularly care for. Leave us some comments. So we want to know what you think of what we're doing. Uh, can I can I read my, my another poem, dear? Yes. Uh, totem. Okay. Uh, the name of the poem is Totem. In the void between the sky. And the art slept a naked man. The artist dissected him with the sharp scalp of vision as he should to resort the dismembered limbs and organs. He found the eye is a flowing river the teeth a step brain mountain, arms a vast forest, eyebrow the crescent moon, face the soft sky, heart the green earth. In every part, the artist saw his own body and the country. Then as the limbs were put together, there was formed the first existential totem. 
thing. Thank you for sharing that. What what inspired that poem? Totem, because it's a belief, uh, it's, it's a belief of our people that uh, artist loves his country when he uh, when he wrote his uh, when he writes his poem uh, separately, mm -hmm. but after some time, everything. Uh, we came together and we saw actually we saw our country and our country visually came to us hmm interesting that's an interesting um, concept so we have a remaining six and a half minutes or so of the program if you would like to say anything to the viewers uh, fellow artists uh, writers people out there listening in you want to give any kind of uh, advice to writers who are, uh, you know, maybe they're struggling out there trying to get their work out, uh, their uh, poetry read. Um, what advice do you have for people that have, you know, struggling with their writing? Thank you, dear friends. I am telling uh, something uh, uh, about those who are struggling in our country. I, uh, you know that. Uh, uh, you know that uh, uh, Burma, Burma uh, from Burma, some refugees come, came to our country. Mm -hmm. You know that, Rohingya. Uh, mm -hmm. They are very uh, affected people. Uh, I want to, uh, I want to request uh, all our international uh, poet society uh, that help them and. Uh, get them back to their uh, country. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, they are burdened for Bangladesh because uh, 15 lakhs people in our country. Now now they uh, we give them shelter. This is the main trouble. And, uh, and I, I, I want to tell all viewers, those who are uh, looking our program I mm -hmm. think our program I tell that uh, uh, we have to go with humanity we have to raise our voice against undemocratic and unparliamentary situation and we are, we have to go pro people uh, and all poets should write like that mm -hmm. we 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 are we believe that art for human sake, not for us. So a very general, I, more for humanity than than for your personal yes. self, right? Yes. Very universal. And I, to, hmm? and I want to tell something uh, for our uh, poet, those who are, those who are not. Uh, no newcomers they they have to uh, they have to try try hard to write poem and they have to learn uh, they have they have to learn more mm -hmm. uh, if we have to if we have to be poet then we have to learn more we have to learn uh, a history of of the world we have to learn mythology we have to learn a uh, world literature if if mm -hmm. we if we can struggle we, we may be a good poet right and and if we read people truly we have to read people we have to read society then we can write properly we can write good poem i think so uh, and uh, i can uh, share some lines from uh, W.B. Yeats. Mm -hmm. is social contact of a solitary person, but poet is poet may be in solitary person, but his poetry is not solitary. His poetry is also sub to the people, sub to the country, sub to the world, sub to the humanity. I agree. I think that that's very interesting, and I'm glad you said that. Uh, 
that we're looking for a uh, you know broad learning, you know, very broad based learning from a poet uh, to understand the world and humanity and to communicate a message. Even though we're writing in solitary state, you know, we're sitting in our desk or wherever else, you know, we're still out there trying to promote a, a general human aesthetic to the world uh, and help us understand ourselves better as people uh, communicating in the world, as well as help move people forward, you know, and especially in these difficult times right now uh, with uh, COVID and all the various economic crises, you know, coming in. And as you mentioned, you know, you know, you have the refugees and immigrants everywhere now that are struggling and, and you know, it's, it's a very tough time right now. And I think poetry is more vital now than it ever has been. And I hope people will read and, and look into more poetry as we uh, progress uh, through this uh, tough time for, our, for the human race. And um, so thank you for joining us. And uh, if there's any shout outs, if you wanna say hello to anybody out there, um, that's, uh, you know, somebody who supported you, people who have new uh, uh, help in the world, um, just if you wanna say hello to some people or give a, you know, a couple of uh, tribute uh, hellos out there to people. And free. Yeah. Uh, I want to uh, respect all of our viewers, those who are uh, uh, those who are um, with us. I want to thank all of them, and I am very grateful to you that you invited me here. And uh, very welcome. And I think that this is a beautiful program, and I also like to join. Uh, with you when you uh, call me in future i also with you and i think that bangladesh i'm from bangladesh i again congratulate you and your people and your literature uh, i think that in covid situation we have to stay safe and i think keep well everybody salute to you thank you for joining us today rasudan uh, this is dustin pickering and you've been watching the new york parrot literary corner and again, if you're viewing, please like our videos, give us some comments, anything you have to say. We will appreciate anything, uh, even critical comments, how we can improve our programming. Thank you very much again, and uh, thank you for joining us. And I hope everyone out there is enjoying this, uh, this uh, season, this changing of seasons. Uh, we're coming up into summer here in, in the United States. And uh, so I hope this, uh, the weather is good at where you're at. And uh, thank you very much again for joining us. And uh, please, if anybody's out there has a little spare change, donate to us. We, we, we could use it. Uh, New York Parrot, uh, it will be uh, paypal.me slash NY Parrot. Uh, that's our, that's our uh, thing. And we're doing the 1 million subscriber channel to our channel. Subscribe to our channel. So thank you very much for joining us again. And everybody have a nice day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. This has been the Parrot Literary.